Welcome to our channel medicine, A to Z. Today, we are talking about allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis is one entity of spectrum diseases called aspergillosis. Aspergillosis is an infection or allergic reaction to aspergillus fungi. It can be subdivided into chronic pulmonary aspergillosis, invasive aspergillosis, and ABPA. Definition. Allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis is a complex hypersensitivity reaction in response to colonization of the airways with aspergillus fumigatus that occurs almost exclusively in patients with asthma or cystic fibrosis. Epidemiology, ABPA, an uncommon complication of asthma. Prevalence, only 1% of persistent asthma patients experience ABPA. Cystic fibrosis, higher prevalence, around 2% to 5%. Also, rarely seen in bronchiectasis, chronic granulomatous disease, and hyperimmunoglobulinemia, pathogenesis. Research indicates that in ABPA, there's a notable rise in Th2CD, four plus cell responses to aspergillus antigens, both locally in the bronchoalveolar lymphoid tissue and throughout the body. These aspergillus responsive T cells play a pivotal role in the immune cascade producing cytokines such as interleukin-4, 5, and 13. These cytokines are responsible for triggering increases in both blood and airway eosinophils, as well as elevated levels of immunoglobulin E in ABPA patients. This heightened immune activity contributes to the characteristic inflammation and allergic responses seen in ABPA. In healthy individuals, even upon inhalation of a substantial quantity of allergens, the body's immune system typically mounts a robust response to eliminate the fungus. This is evident through laboratory findings, such as low levels of immunoglobulin G, IgG, in the serum and low levels of immunoglobulin A, IgA, in the bronchoalveolar fluid. These observations suggest that the immune system efficiently controls the presence of allergens in the airways of normal individuals preventing the development of allergic reactions and complications such as ABPA. When aspergillus colonizes the airways of asthmatic individuals, it triggers robust immune responses mediated by both immunoglobulin E, IgE, and immunoglobulin G, IgG, which are layered upon the existing asthmatic environment. Despite these vigorous immune reactions observed in ABPA, the fungus persists in colonizing the airways, leading to recurrent symptoms. The release of proteolytic enzymes and mycotoxins by the fungi, along with Thath2-mediated eosinophilic inflammation and IL-8-mediated neutrophilic inflammation, contributes to airway damage and the development of central bronchiectasis. Pathological features. Firstly, mucus impaction is commonly observed, indicating the accumulation of mucus within the airways, contributing to airflow obstruction and respiratory symptoms. Secondly, Eosinophilic pneumonia is a hallmark characteristic, reflecting the infiltration of eosinophils into the lung tissue, which is indicative of an allergic response. Lastly, bronchocentric granulomatosis may also be present, highlighting the formation of granulomas around the bronchi, further complicating the inflammatory response in ABPA. Clinical indications to suspecting ABPA. Recognition of ABPA can be challenging, but certain clinical indicators should prompt suspicion. Firstly, hemoptysis, or coughing up blood, should raise concern, especially in patients with persistent asthma who show poor response to standard treatments. Secondly, the presence of a productive cough accompanied by brownish plaques in the sputum is another key sign to consider. These plaques are often composed of mucus and fungal elements, indicating aspergillus colonization. In summary, when encountering patients exhibiting hemoptysis, poor asthma control, and the production of distinctive sputum, clinicians should maintain a high index of suspicion for ABPA and consider appropriate diagnostic evaluation and management. Several laboratory findings can aid in the diagnosis of ABPA on complete blood count, CBC. Eosinophilia is commonly observed, indicating an elevated level of eosinophils in the blood. Serum immunoglobulin E, IgE levels are often significantly increased, frequently exceeding 1,000 IUML, serving as a hallmark of allergic and fungal-driven inflammation. Specific serological tests for aspergillus, including serum aspergillus-specific IgG and IgE, are crucial. 
Elevated levels of these antibodies suggest sensitization to Aspergillus antigens, supporting the diagnosis of ABPA. Lastly, sputum culture for aspergillosis is essential for identifying the presence of aspergillus in the respiratory tract, further confirming the diagnosis. Chest X-ray features of ABPA. Tramline shadows, which are characterized by thickened walls of non-dilated bronchi, appearing as parallel lines on the X-ray. Next, we have parallel lines, indicative of ectatic bronchi, manifesting as parallel lines on the image. Moving on to ring shadows, which signify bronchial wall thickening or secular bronchiectasis, forming ring-like structures on the X-ray. Now, toothpaste shadows, a distinctive feature caused by mucoid-impacted second to fourth order bronchi, resembling squeezed toothpaste tubes on the X-ray. Gloved finger shadows are another notable finding, resulting from intrabronchial exudates with bronchial wall thickening, resembling the shape of a gloved finger on the X-ray. Lastly, perihilar opacities, which can mimic hilar adenopathy due to mucus plugging, causing haziness around the hilar region. HRCT features of ABPA, bronchiectasis, mucus impaction, finger and glove appearance. Mucus impaction is a characteristic feature observed on HRCT scans in patients with ABPA. This refers to the accumulation of mucus within the bronchi, leading to airway obstruction and subsequent bronchiectasis. The finger and glove appearance is another hallmark finding. This term describes the appearance of dilated bronchi filled with mucus, resembling the shape of a finger within a glove. Diagnostic criteria of allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, ABPA. We'll explore the diagnostic criteria of allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis as proposed by the International Society for Human and Animal Mycology Working Group. To diagnose ABPA, certain predisposing conditions must be present. These include asthma or cystic fibrosis. In addition to the predisposing conditions, two obligatory criteria must be met. Firstly, detectable serum IgE levels against Aspergillus fumigatus or Aspergillus skin test positivity are required. Secondly, an elevated total serum IgE concentration is necessary. Typically, this is 1000 IU ml. However, if all other criteria are met, an IgE value, 1,000 IU ml, may be acceptable. These criteria serve as essential guidelines for clinicians in diagnosing ABPA, helping to ensure accurate identification and appropriate management of this condition. In addition to the predisposing conditions and obligatory criteria, the diagnosis of allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, ABPA, requires at least two of the following additional criteria, as proposed by the International Society for Human and Animal Mycology Working Group. Firstly, presence of precipitating serum antibodies to Aspergillus fumigatus or elevated Aspergillus fumigatus specific IgG levels can aid in the diagnosis. Secondly, radiographic pulmonary opacities consistent with ABPA are crucial for diagnosis. Lastly, a total eosinophil count more than 500 cells per microliter in glucocorticoid naive patients may be present. Treatment for Allergic Bronchopulmonary Aspergillosis Now, let's explore the treatment options for Allergic Bronchopulmonary Aspergillosis, ABPA, aimed at managing symptoms and reducing inflammation. Steroids serve as the cornerstone of treatment for ABPA. The recommended dosage is 0.5 mg per kilogram per day for 14 days, followed by a tapering regimen of every other day for 3 to 6 months. In addition to steroids, Antifungal therapy is often prescribed to target the underlying fungal infection. Two commonly used antifungals include voriconazole and itraconazole. Voriconazole is typically administered at a dosage of 400 mg twice daily for two doses, followed by 200 mg twice daily for a total duration of 16 weeks. Alternatively, itraconazole may be used with an initial dosage of 200 mg three times daily for three days followed by 200 mg twice daily for 16 weeks. In addition to initiating treatment, it's essential to monitor the progress of patients with allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, ABPA, to ensure optimal management and therapeutic response. Total IgE levels serve as a key parameter for monitoring treatment response in ABPA. It is recommended to measure total IgE levels every one to two months, aiming for a reduction of 25% or more from baseline, However, 
It's important to note that monitoring of Aspergillus-specific IgE or IgG is not recommended, as there is limited correlation with clinical response. In cases where conventional therapy is inadequate or not tolerated, biological therapy may be considered as an alternative or adjunctive treatment. Anti-interleukin, IL-5 agents, such as mepolizumab and benralizumab, are among the biological therapies used in ABPA management. Other options include omalizumab, which targets immunoglobulin E, Ig, and dupilumab, an anti-AL4 subunit antibody. Stay updated with the latest in medicine. Subscribe to our channel for comprehensive videos covering the latest updates in the field.